Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in today's video we're going to be having a look at the intersection observer within JavaScript. Okay, so the intersection observer, um, basically it allows you to uh, know whenever an element becomes visible to your end user. So this can be used relative to the entire document viewport or um, it can be used relative to a scrollable element. Okay, so uh, basically you're going to want to use this whenever you want to perform certain actions only when an element is visible. So for example, you could use it um, to to load images only when they need to be loaded um, or maybe you want to uh, display an animation only when an element is actually visible, things like that. So um, as we can see right here on my example document, I've got a bunch of dummy text. now. If I was to scroll down, we can see right here, we've got this red square. So we're going to be using the intersection observer to identify whenever the user, of course me in this case, um, scrolls down enough for the red square to become visible. Okay, so let's go inside the text editor right here and take a look at the current HTML file. So we can see right here, I've got a few CSS styles for the box. I've got a width and height and a background of red. And down here, I've got all of the, uh, all of the dummy text. And of course, right here, div with an ID of box. And then just down here, I've got the actual main.js file, which looks like this currently. So let's have a look at using the intersection observer um, to of course, uh, you know, detect when the box becomes visible. So the very first thing to do um, is going to be to uh, get a reference to our box. So I can say right here, const box is equal to document.getElementById and pass through right here the box. Okay. Um, so now in order to use the intersection observer, we're going to want to uh, create a new instance of the intersection observer. So let's make a new constant down here now called observer is equal to a new intersection observer just like that. So now this one right here, this constructor, um, it expects to receive a callback function. So let's put it, uh, let's, let's uh, put inside here callback function just like that. And we can now define that callback function. So let's go up here and say const callback function is equal to um, a new function just like this. Now, I do want to mention that uh, this callback function is going to be used for every example moving forward in this video. But um, the callback function is going to be ran whenever an intersection occurs. Okay, so basically, if I was to go back inside this example right here, um, this callback function is going to run whenever the box comes into view. So right there. And it's also going to run whenever the box goes out of view, just like that. So in that case right there, this scroll down, then scroll back up, it's going to run twice. Just keep that in mind. Okay, let's go back inside here. And this function is going to accept an array of entries. Okay, so I can type through entries just like that. And basically, um, this array of entries, we're only going to be worrying about the first element inside here. But basically, these entries describe um, details about the intersection. So we can get into that a bit later on, or very shortly at least. Um, but for now, let's just console.log and pass through here entries at index zero. Okay, so like I said, in our case right here, if I was to scroll down and then back up again, that's going to run twice and we're going to be receiving two of these entries. Okay, so now um, to actually make this work, we need to say observer and then call the observe method just like that. And then pass through here our target element. In this case, it's going to be box. So this right here is the most simple example of the intersection observer in use. Let's save this right here and then refresh the page. And we can see, firstly, we actually get um, the callback function being ran on page load. And we can see right here, we've got a bunch of um, a bunch of properties to work with. Now, I do want to ignore this just for now and then scroll down and actually get one of our um, ones that we most likely going to care about a bit more. So let's scroll down and reach the red square just like that. And as we can see, of course, right here, we get in the console our intersection observer entry object once again. And right here, like I said, there's a few useful properties. So 
Um, the two most useful ones here is going to be the intersection ratio and also the is intersecting property. So the intersection ratio it just tells you how much of the um, how much of the box was visible when the callback function uh, ran. So basically right here this is going to go from 0 to 1 okay so in this case right here if I was to times this by 100 it's going to give me a percentage so I might just refresh here and then scroll back down a bit quicker this time as we can see here we get 0 0.02 as I was a bit faster and this right here just means 2% was visible when um, when we got this object okay cool and that is 2% of the box by the way um, so now the is intersecting property, this right here basically just tells you um, whether or not, in this case anyway, um, the box is visible. Okay, so um, as we can see here, of course, as we scroll down, we get is intersecting true. Now, this is going to make more sense if I was to now scroll up, and we can see now that becomes false because, of course, we've actually, um, we've gone uh, beyond or we've gone before our... Um, our sort of starting point of right there if that makes sense so basically um, in most cases um, if your is intersecting is true it means that your box is visible or whatever you want to do is visible if it's false that means that of course it is uh, basically the user went upwards and it is not visible okay so um, like I said that is the most simple example of the intersection observer working um, so now Let's go inside here and we can actually pass through a few more options. So let's go inside here, put an extra comma and specify our second argument to the intersection observer constructor. And here we're going to pass through some options. So uh, the first option I want to explore is going to be the threshold property. Okay, so this right here, basically it allows you to define um, whenever your callback function is going to be ran in terms of half, um, how far down in the box in this case. So for example, if I was to say 0 0.4, this means 40%. Uh, so we're only going to be seeing our callback function being ran once we reach 40% of the box visibility. Let's save this and refresh. And we can scroll now, and as we can see, uh, nothing happens just yet. But if I was to scroll down a bit more to about 40%, we can see now, of course, it comes through. And also, the intersection ratio confirms right here, 0 0.401. It is very close to, of course, 0 0.4. So the intersection ratio um, is very similar um, in terms of the way it looks compared to... Uh, uh, compared to or um, you know it's uh, similar to the threshold property basically so 0 0.4 there and of course 0 0.4 right there now once again the is intersection uh, sorry the the is intersecting property is equal to true um, if I was to scroll back up now to be uh, less than 40 just like that we can see now of course we get the same thing this time is intersecting equal to false because we've actually gone past the invisible line here um, or gone beyond this way um, past the invisible line of of course 40 percent okay so let's go back inside here now and take a look at a few more examples so you can even pass through an array of uh, values here for the threshold so for example I can say 0 0.2 and then 0 0.5 for example and let's just do 0 0.8 okay now let's save this and refresh and this time we're going to be receiving that callback function um, every time we pass our different thresholds. So if I was to scroll down, our first one was uh, 0 0.2, so 20%. So let's go down and reach 20% real quick and we can see right there we get our, of course, same thing as before. Um, let's scroll down a bit further to 50 and we get one more and of course now let's go a bit more. 80 and we get one more so I do want to demonstrate here also now if I was to uh, go back up to about 79 or whatever it is um, right now we can see the is intersecting property is still true so that is because um, we still have passed our lines here at 20% and 50% so technically it is still intersecting um, that is why it's true we're only going to see false when we pass our first one which is of course 20. So let's just go up, up a bit more and at 20% we can see now 
uh, this is equal to false. Okay, so um, that is how to specify multiple values there. Um, not too sure of a, a specific use case for that, but I'm sure there's some out there. Um, so now, um, all of those examples I showed you were relative to um, the relative to the whole viewport right here. So the whole page itself. Okay, so um, you can even uh, use the observer for um, a scrollable element. Okay, so basically we're going to be replacing the document viewport with a scrollable element instead. So let's go back inside the index HTML and we're just going to be wrapping all of this content um, inside a, um, a div with an ID of container just like that. I'm just going to be of course putting all of this stuff inside this container and we can apply a few styles to the container to make it a scrollable element. So I can say right here, container. I'm going to be saying, uh, let's do a height of, let's just say 150 uh, pixels and an overflow um, Y of auto to uh, give us a scroll bar. So now saving this and refreshing, uh, we can see right here, if I was to now scroll down, um, you know what, I did actually forget, my mistake guys, I did forget to go back inside the JavaScript and uh, just get a reference to the container and then actually use it for the intersection observer. So, uh, my mistake, let's go inside here and get a reference to the container real quick. So we can say container just like this. Um, and now with the container um, now uh, assigned to uh, this constant, uh, let's go inside here and specify right here inside the options um, a root property and right here we're going to be passing through the container. So now uh, we've changed from um, essentially the viewport from being the whole browser so this right here um, to now this container right here everything's going to be relative to that one. Okay so now if I was to uh, refresh let's try again uh, we're going to get very similar results here so if I scroll down we can see at 20% uh, we get that right there and keep going then we can get just right here 50 and let's keep scrolling and we get none for 80. Um, if I was to continue now uh, we can see we get once again one more for 50 okay and uh, one more down here for 20. So uh, what happened there was the reason why we didn't get an 80 is because 80% of the box was never actually visible. Okay, so uh, the reason for that is because the container was simply too short. So, in order to make our 80% uh, actually fire off, let's go back inside here and just increase uh, the height of the container. So, let's put 200 pixels inside there, uh, save this and then refresh. Uh, and now we should, see, uh, we should see our result of getting uh, 20 and then 50 and then 80 um, just right there. So uh, like I said, this works in the exact same way, but uh, we're using uh, the container as the ancestor um, instead of the actual main viewport. Okay, now in most cases you're probably just going to be using uh, the actual, uh, you know, browser viewport um, as your root. So in most cases uh, you probably don't want to be specifying this property. Um, it depends on your own situation. But like I said, in most cases uh, you're going to be using the browser viewport instead. So of course you can leave out that root property. Okay, now I just want to go back inside here and I do want to just remove this container now so we can take a look at a few more things before I finish up this tutorial. So let's put this back and um, go back inside here. So uh, the next property I'm going to be looking at is going to be, um, it's going to be, um, it's going to be the, uh, the root margin property. So uh, this one right here, if I just get rid of this. Um, I might just actually set the threshold here um, to be, uh, let's make it, you know what, let's actually keep it at zero. So by default, by the way, the threshold is going to be zero. Um, so of course, something like this is the default, okay, if you don't actually specify it. So let's keep that at basically just not specifying it, use the default. And right here, we're going to be specifying the root margin property uh, just like that. So this one, um, it allows you to alter um, the bounds of your, um, of your containing element, okay. Okay, so uh, we can say right here, for example, uh, 15 px just like that. So this works in a similar way to the CSS margin property. You can specify 15, then uh, you know, 
keep going. So top, right, bottom, left, etc. But let's keep it a 15 px all around, um, all around for simplicity. Now this right here basically just means that we're ex uh, we're expanding um, our point of intersection by 15 pixels. So let's go back inside here, refresh, and um, we're going to be scrolling down a bit further down, and we can see we get the entry coming up 15 pixels from the top of the box just like that. So everything happens 15 px uh, essentially uh, with a 15 px of more space around everything. So um, if I was to go down here now, we can see we don't actually get anything um, until, of course, keep going, we get one just around there. So um, that is what the root margin property does. You can even specify negative, for example, negative 15px. Let's save this and refresh, and um, this time, um, we can see, um, we actually get to see the box before it comes up. Now, if I was to uh, keep scrolling down, at 15px down, we now uh, get to see the intersection uh, entry coming up and um, also note that the intersection ratio is now zero. So obviously um, in, in a previous example without the root margin of negative 15, uh, this right here might be something like 10% visibility but this time because everything happens with that 15px uh, space, it is now zero. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, and uh, I do want to show you now real quick, um, if I also just, maybe just scroll down a bit more again. Um, I want to show you right here another property and that is the intersection rect property. So um, this one right here um, is, is quite handy uh, because it lets you know uh, how, much of, um, how much of the box, in this particular case of course, uh, how much is actually visible or how much um, is visible in the context of the intersection. So of course this right here, our intersection uh, root margin has pushed everything down by 15. So I might just actually go back inside here and get a better example working. So let's make this uh, a threshold of something like 0 0.2. Let's save this and refresh and uh, scroll down and we can see of course right here. Now the intersection uh, rect, let's go back to this now. Uh, this right here, like I said, lets you know how much is visible in this particular case with a root margin of zero. Um, we can see right here the height of 40. So this right here is basically just 40 pixels as the height right there. Of course we get the bottom and we get the left and the right, so left of 20, right of um, 220. And of course the width and all those other things that you'll typically get with the DOM rect read only um, object just like that. So of course um, you can use this in your own way, uh, whichever way you find it to be useful. But um, for me I think uh, you know these three properties, intersection ratio, intersection rect and is intersecting are probably the most useful properties um, out of all these properties which um, you get from your um, entries. Okay so the very last two things I want to show you um, is going to be two more methods on the um, on the observer. So let's go back inside here, and um, we're going to be saying right here, observer dot uh, unobserve. So this right here basically just allows you to say, okay, I'm done observing. Let's just unobserve. So we can pass through box right there. So now saving this and refreshing, um, we're going to see no entry um, in the console and of course scrolling down is going to give us nothing. So basically we've just cancelled out the, um, um, the watching of that particular target element. So let's save this now once I've commented it out. Let's save this and refresh and then of course scroll down. Then uh, we can just say observer, unobserve once again pass through box and now we should see no more um, entries in the console, so of course the exact same result. Okay, so the very last one here is going to be the disconnect property. So, sorry, uh, method. So the disconnect method um, allows you to essentially just uh, stop observing all the elements which you may have observed. So we can say, for example, observer dot disconnect, and now if I was to say, you know, for example, box one, box two, box three, and add multiple different uh, observations here or elements to watch, because you can actually do that. Um, you can say, you know, multiple elements being observed. Now if I was to say disconnect, it's going to be essentially just cancelling the watching of all of these elements at once. So um, to avoid any problems, I might just comment out these two, but um, you get the idea. If you're observing multiple different elements, uh, they're all going to stop 
uh, being observed. So uh, saving this and refreshing we can see once again we get a very similar result uh, because of course we have uh, disconnected before we even got a chance um, to see the observer in action. So um, that right there is the intersection observer in JavaScript. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you later.